So, you know, one of my favorite, favorite lines to always ask yourself when any situation that might be hard or might be difficult is to ask yourself, what am I seeing that God doesn't see? What is God seeing that I'm not seeing? That's one of the most powerful things you can ask yourself. Because when you start to do that, then you're confronted with the ego. And then the ego says, oh no, I cannot see that person as innocent. I cannot see that person as loving. I cannot see that person as, as the key to my happiness. No, nope, can't do it, can't do it. But if you have the courage to start to do this, start to forgive everyone for everything, you will begin to change your life. So, today we are going to, good morning, we're going to go over a really beautiful paragraph. And it is in chapter 17, section 2, and it's paragraph 1, chapter 17, section 2, paragraph 1. If you have A Course in Miracles, you can follow along. If you don't, that's okay too, because um, we'll be talking about it, we'll be contemplating on it. And this is a very beautiful section. It's called The Forgiven World, and it's very interesting because... Um, one of my private students right now and I are working on forgiveness. Now, let me say this before we start. A Course in Miracles brings up forgiveness many times, over and over and over. So forgiveness is something that's going to come up over and over and over. Now, what's the reason why? Because what Jesus is trying to help us in this book is to, not book, text, spiritual text. It's trying to help us to move from an orientation that is based in this world, which is finite, which is limited, which is duality, and helping us to move beyond that to an orientation that is so rich, so big, so vast that you can't even conceive it. And one of the <clears throat> most powerful ways that you can begin to even glimpse that or experience that or touch that is through the process of forgiveness. If you know what forgiveness is, forgiveness is often very um, often talked about and often misunderstood. And forgiveness is a process. This is why it's it's brought up many times in A Course in Miracles and something that is vital if you really do want spiritual awakening or spiritual enlightenment, whatever you call it, to start that ball rolling in your life, you're going to have to confront forgiveness. And many people here have. And if you have, you understand that, that forgiveness plays a role, right? So this, this whole section is called the forgiven world. This whole section, this chapter is called the forgiven world. And this, this one, um, this whole, sorry, this chapter is called the forgiven world. And this section is also called the forgiven world. Now I chose this because many times in A Course in Miracles, what happens is we get very heady. We start to think a lot and try to figure it out and try to understand, which is fine because we're trying to use our mind to move out of our mind because true spiritual awakening is is something that, that occurs when we move out of a relationship to our mind, if that makes sense. So a little bit unlike how we usually do break down, break down, break down, I want you to just listen to this. You can even close your eyes. You're welcome. You can even close your eyes and let it just wash over you. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> can you imagine 
how beautiful those you forgive will look to you. In no fantasy have you ever seen anything so lovely. Nothing you see here, sleeping or walking, comes near to such loveliness. And nothing will you value like unto this, nor hold so dear. Nothing that you remember that made your heart sing with joy has ever brought you even a little part of the happiness this sight will bring you. For you will see the Son of God. You will behold the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Um, um, the, the beauty the Holy Spirit loves to look upon and which he thanks the Father for. He was created to see this for you until you learned to see it for yourself. And all his teaching leads to seeing it and giving thanks with You can feel that there's something going on here. There's something shifting and something changing when you read some of these sections of a course that are so beautiful and so moving. Let's break it down a little bit. This whole paragraph depends on the very first line. So let's read the first line. Can you imagine how beautiful those you forgive will look to you. Think about it right now. You know, the Course in Miracles is a mystical path, meaning that it's asking you to actually walk the walk, do the work in your life. So think of someone you're not forgiving right now. Could be someone you know personally, could be someone in your family, it could be um, a public figure who you're not forgiving because they're not doing what you think they should do. Right now, think of that person. And think about if you're ready to forgive them. Forgive them for being who they are. Forgive your interpretation that you think they should be different. But that's it there for a second. Can you begin to do that? Because if you can begin to forgive people, situations, yourself, everything else, that this talks about is what you will experience. In no fantasy have you ever seen anything so lovely as the person that you forgive when you forgive them. Because what you're doing is you're seeing a projection of what you think they are, which is not who they are. You're seeing an image that you have projected on them. You're not seeing the truth of who they are. This is how the ego works. This is how projection in psychology works. We are projecting onto people what we believe they are. This is a hard pill to swallow for some people. And in some some, um, instances of your life, it's a hard pill to swallow. But in no fantasy have you ever seen anything so lovely. Nothing you see here, sleeping or walking, comes near to such loveliness. And nothing will you value like unto this, nor hold so dear. So whatever, all the incredible things you've experienced in your life, all the beauty you've experienced in your life, all the joy, 
has nothing compared to what you will experience when you forgive your brother. Take that in for a moment. For you will see the Son of God. You will behold the beauty the Holy Spirit loves to look upon and which he thanks his Father for. You will see the Son of God. You will not see a personality. You will not see something that needs to change. You will see the Son of God. And that is where healing begins. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. So the Holy Spirit sees this already. Holy Spirit, I say, is a free, a, a level of frequency that sees, that's able to see with divine source and with us at the same time. So it's a bridge so that we can see how God sees. You know, one of my favorite, favorite lines to always ask yourself when any situation that might be hard or might be difficult is to ask yourself, what am I seeing that God doesn't see? What is God seeing that I'm not seeing? That's one of the most powerful things you can ask yourself. Because when you start to do that, then you're confronted with the ego. And then the ego says, oh, no, I cannot see that person as innocent. I cannot see that person as loving. I cannot see that person as, as the key to my happiness. No, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. But if you have the courage to start to do this, start to forgive everyone for everything, you will begin to change your life. That's what real forgiveness does. And we're ta not talking about an idea here of going, you know, when people say, well, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. Forget that is not forgiveness. <laughs> My favorite definition of forgiveness is, now this is paraphrased, so don't kill me. <coughs> the Buddha says, forgiveness is letting go of the thought that the person, the situation, or yourself should be any different than what it is or what it was. Forgiveness is letting go of the thought that the person, the situation, or yourself should have been any different than what it is or what it was. And if you can start to do that and you apply that in your life, boy, oh boy, peace starts to rush in. Joy starts to rush in. Lightness starts to come back to your life. Take a deep breath. Of course it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Most people are going to go to their grave holding on to this idea that other people are wrong, that the world is bad, or in a way, even worse, that I'm bad, I'm wrong, instead of just fucking forgive yourself already, Jesus. What the fucking time, here's the deal, time, tick, 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 time isn't real, but in the illusion it is, and time is wasted. So you could have a miracle right now. You could be in joy right now if you just choose to forgive people or yourself for being what they are. That's the truth. So why don't you just forgive it and just get over it? And so you can just actually be the light of God that you're supposed to be while you're here. Well, you already are, but you just don't know it. So you might as well just do it. And of course it's hard. Most people won't do it. But will you do it? This is what it's asking. Will you do it? It doesn't matter what most people are doing. I don't give a shit about what most people are doing. I only care about what you're doing and what I'm doing. That's it. I'm always care what I'm doing. I want to see this differently. 
Matilda, you're right on, because that's that's one of the lessons in the Course of Miracles. I want to see this differently. That's exactly one of the lessons of the Course of Miracles. So you're already on track. Of course they hurt you, and of course they yell at you. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean that you stay in a situation that is detrimental to you. That's not forgiveness. Standing up and trusting in God, trusting in source, and moving forward in your life, you can still forgive people and move forward with your life. <clears throat> It's Mary, I understand that. It takes a little bit more process. And I'm not saying, listen, I am not disvaluing you, but everyone's gone through trauma on some level, some more than others, that's for sure. But everyone's gone through trauma on some level. So you address that trauma. You go to see somebody. You go to therapy. You work through the trauma, but you don't stay in the trauma. Trauma... Doing this work without forgiveness will never work, right? It won't work. It just won't work. That's a great question. Everyone's been through trauma. So, it doesn't address trauma exactly. But it does address the condition that you feel you are in because of trauma. Now, here's the deal. The original trauma, in Christianity they call it the original sin, is the thought that we were separate from God. That's the original trauma. That's the original trauma. Everything after that is then piled up. And when we remember that we are not separate from God, that we are connected with source, love, divine self, then things start to change. Then you're being starts to change. How you walk through the world starts to change. How you treat others starts to change. How you treat yourself starts to change. Right? Okay, take a deep breath. 